So here we are, back at it again with some more DLC speculation. I've been busy scouring the comments, seeing who you want me to discuss, and today is the day I've got the first batch of characters hot off the presses for you. I've decided to spend a little more time talking about each character than I have in the previous videos to make sure your favorites get the airtime that they deserve, and so that we don't skip over any of the important details. I'll once again be rating each character on their overall hype level and likelihood. Keep in mind that the hype level I'm assigning to each character represents my personal excitement at the possibility of each character's inclusion, while the likelihood score shows what I think their realistic chances are of appearing in the game. Other than that, if you want to join me in talking about these characters' chances of making it into Fighters Pass 2, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments. Or if you're looking for a place to find a more active discussion with me and the rest of my community, you can find the link to my Twitch channel in the description as well as the Stabilize Discord. We get all kinds of stuff going on in both these places, so I hope to see you there. Give the video a like if you enjoy it, and if you're new here, subscribe to see more videos just like this one. But without further ado, let's get into it. Spyro In the world of PlayStation All-Stars, Spyro undoubtedly stands in Crash's shadow. They've both followed a very similar arc in their careers. A solid trilogy that everyone loves, with some not-so-great games that came afterwards, before being rebooted into... Yeah, whatever you call that. But then they both managed to come back into the spotlight with great remakes of the original games that we all fell in love with in the first place. We can't all be mascot material though, and while Crash was busy enjoying his status as Mr. Sony, Spyro has been quietly laying in wait for his chance to jump into the real mainstream, and Smash Brothers may just be that chance. Bring him on! I'm ready! At the end of the day, I think it's pretty tough to talk about Spyro's chances for Smash without the narrative that he would have to beat Crash for the spot. But that doesn't change the fact that I think Spyro would be a really exciting inclusion for a couple of different reasons. His moveset is diverse and includes gliding, elemental breath attacks, and charging headbutts to name a few, and overall his basic move pool spans quite a bit wider than Crash's spin and slide. Of course, we all know that any character can work for Smash regardless of their perceived moveset potential, but I still think a wide moveset is a valid point in a character's favor. I mean, hell, we have Piranha Plant. I think that's more than enough to prove Sakurai can work his voodoo smash magic on anything he touches. But even with that being said, the organic nature of a potential transition into Smash may actually edge Spyro ahead of Crash in terms of my personal excitement for his inclusion. Getting Spyro would also lend to the idea that a character doesn't have to be the biggest flagship icon of a company in order to get a Smash invite like many people seem to think. So Spyro could open speculation chances for a lot of other underappreciated characters. Personally, Personally, I like Spyro as a character a lot more than I do Crash, and although he may be a bit of an underdog in terms of his likelihood, I would love to see this excitable purple dragon make his way into the roster. This is more of a side point, but I also think getting a character that runs on four legs would be really cool. Representation for our quadruped friends is pretty lacking in this game. Sure, we have Duck Hunt and some Pokemon, but with a roster this huge, it would be nice to have a quick and nimble dragon who puts these other few four-legged fighters to shame. He can really embrace what it means to bounce around the stage like a lion hunting on its prey. I can't really put my finger on why, but Spyro's design and personality really appeal to me even though I've had a very limited experience with his games. You get to go around the different worlds freeing dragons, collecting gems, burning sheep alive. You know, just like normal game stuff. The games are fun, and that's all that really matters in my eyes. Spyro's personality and appearance would fit perfectly into Ultimate, and I think a lot of the people who gave initial backlash to the announcement would end up being quite surprised with how much they enjoy playing as him, if his design is anything like I'm imagining it. He may not be the most likely choice in terms of the political, publisher, company relations kind of side of things, but that won't stop me from hoping to see him in Smash. It's just kind of sad that all the Spyro fans have to live with the fact that Activision has such a better option for a Smash character right at their fingertips. Mr. Call of Duty guy himself, Captain Price. Let's go, baby! Hype level nine! Likelihood, five. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. That's right, the lawful goofball himself has a lot of fans who would love to see him make his way into the Smash roster, myself included. Phoenix Wright is a pretty unconventional pick for a character in Smash, seeing as he doesn't really fight in his games. Well, I guess he does, just not with his fists. 
but with his words. Objection! Yes, the pen is mightier than the sword, and the great thing about Phoenix being included is that it would give representation to a game genre that is very underappreciated in Smash, being visual novel games. For those of you unfamiliar, the Ace Attorney games are just as much games you play as they are stories that you read. Now, I don't mean for that to sound super lame or anything, because it really isn't. These games are a roller coaster of emotion and character moments that really pull you into the world of being a defense attorney. Sure, the storylines and gameplay elements may not always be exactly representative of the real justice system, but hey, finally, after all these years, when your mom goes, Oh, Johnny, stop with those video games. Why don't you go read a book for once? You can just turn around and show her the Phoenix Wright games and say, Mom! Mom, this is a book! It's worth mentioning that even though Phoenix Wright may not be known for his physical abilities in any sense, he can work in the context of a fighting game, as you can see in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I'm sure he could fit a similar role in Smash as he did there, with a more lighthearted, joke character kind of design that we haven't really seen with any of the other DLCs. Something along the lines of Game & Watch or Duck Hunt, where the character itself isn't necessarily bad or bottom tier by design, but the moves themselves are just so ridiculous and out there that it would be hard to take fighting him seriously. This is a series that has had a home on Nintendo consoles since the very beginning. And with the popularity of the games, I can see Nintendo and Capcom working together on this one pretty easily. You just have to want Phoenix in the game. How could you ever pass up on the opportunity to beat up your opponent by simply pointing your finger at them and shouting huge word bubbles? Well, you can't. That's how. Hype level 7! Likelihood 4. Rex and Pyra. Okay, so, no, I haven't played this game, and no, I probably won't play this game anytime soon. I just simply don't have enough time for a massive JRPG like this right now. Persona 5R just came out, and even though I never played the original, this has been sitting on my shelf for weeks, unopened. I will get to it soon, I swear. The conversation about Rex and Pyra as Smash candidates is back in full swing now that the first reveal for Fighters Pass 2 has everyone up in arms about arms. <laughs> I should really lose my YouTube license for that one, shouldn't I? For those who aren't in the know, Sakurai has been quoted as saying that the reason Xenoblade Chronicles 2 didn't get a character in Smash Ultimate was because the development cycle on Ultimate was so far ahead of the release of Xenoblade 2, Sakurai didn't really have a chance to work with any of the characters from the game. In other words, Sakurai couldn't include anyone from Xenoblade Chronicles 2 because by the time the characters even existed in a playable state that he could have sampled, Ultimate was already getting close to being completed, or at least far enough along that an additional character for the roster was pretty out of the question. However, what really makes things interesting is that Sakurai also said this exact same thing about ARMS not receiving a fighter in the base game. The development of the games just simply didn't line up. But now that we know an ARMS character will be included in Fighters Pass 2, well, I'm sure you can connect the dots there. Using the same ARMS logic, there's not really anything to stop Rex and Pyra's inclusion anymore. Sakurai is a known fan of Xenoblade and clearly felt bad about Rex missing his chance to be in Smash, as can be seen by the Mii costume that was included as a pre-order bonus for the first Fighter's Pass. So with all this evidence in mind, I'd say this character could be pretty likely. At the time of releasing this video, ARMS is the only franchise we know of that will for sure be a part of Fighter's Pass 2, and although that doesn't mean much on its own, if I were a guessing man, I would say that this Fighter's Pass will probably lean more towards first party characters in comparison to the first Fighter's Pass. Just call it a guy feeling, I guess. So if we're looking at Nintendo's first party list of yet to be included characters, I would say it's pretty clear that Rex and Pyra sit comfortably somewhere near the top. I'm not entirely sure how they would implement the mechanics seen in the game with Pyra and Mithra, I guess, but I'm sure they could work something out. Either way, JRPGs like this have tons and tons of material to pull from when creating a moveset, and with the way that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has sold, the chances for representation in Smash seem high enough to me. The easiest place to pull characters from for Smash is Nintendo's own properties, and although my personal hype level is not very high for this inclusion, I know there's an army of fans who have wanted nothing more since before the game even released. So all I can say to them is, Hey there. I know we all want different characters in Smash Brothers, and although my personal excitement for this inclusion is not very high, I can see how excited you are for it. The truth is, you getting your character does not reduce the chances of me getting the character that I want later on. So I'm just excited to continue celebrating this game that we all love as a community, regardless of whose dream characters get added as DLC. I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you on the other side of history at the end of Fighters Pass 2.
Also, does anyone want a Wi-Fi? Hype level? Two. Likelihood? Nine. So before we continue, let's take a look at the first Fighter's Pass. There's one thing I notice, and that's a distinct mix of representing the past and the present throughout its characters. Joker and Byleth represent the future of gaming as they clash with Banjo and Terry's huge legacies from the past. And quite poetically, Hero is left in the middle as a perfect mix of the two, having modern as well as retro representatives throughout his four characters. So with all the requests for the new and shiny video game characters that have come to flood Sakurai's Twitter mentions, what if we instead stop to think about including someone who goes back a bit farther? Someone who represents what was arguably one of the best RPGs, not even just on the Super Nintendo, but of all time to this day. Chrono. That's right, I'm talking about our main man Chrono from Chrono Trigger. There's not a lot to say here that hasn't already been said, but I will do my best. Chrono Trigger is to many one of the greatest games ever made. The ability to engage with enemies on the overworld instead of transitioning to a separate battle screen every time was a standout feature at the time, and the unique time travel mechanic is much more than a linear path through the game's story. The game has side missions and additional character development based scenarios that you can only find by playing with the flow of time on your own, without the game holding your hand. There's also a huge amount of endings to the game that you reach based on your own decisions as a player, and this gigantic list goes farther beyond the binary good or bad ending that most games had at the time. There's a lot of really great storytelling and character work in this game, and the gameplay has classic JRPG goodness with its own little spins that keep things interesting and fun. Chrono Trigger is undoubtedly a titan that stands tall and proud in the JRPG genre, right next to the likes of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. But if this is true, why is it that it has gone completely unrepresented in Smash Bros? Well, that's probably for a few reasons. For starters, Square Enix is notoriously stingy with their properties in Smash, as we all saw with Cloud's inclusion. You know you're doing something wrong when you're one of the best games of all time, and you have less content than Ice Climbers. With Heroes Edition though, things were a bit more reasonable, so it seems like they could now be open to digging a bit deeper to get Chrono in the game if they wanted to. The only thing is, I would say they just don't want to. It seems that Chrono Trigger doesn't have as much of a lasting impact in Square Enix's eyes as it does to the rest of the gaming community. Chrono Trigger came out in 1995 and everyone loved it, and when its sequel, Chrono Cross, was released, it was also met with critical acclaim. Though, looking back, it obviously pales in comparison to the original. Aside from some enhanced ports of the original game to different platforms, there's been nothing Chrono Trigger related in the last 20 years. Unlike Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, Chrono Trigger just did not springboard into a series of long-lasting, successful games, and I think that's the big reason it hasn't had as long of a lasting impact on the industry. Well, at least to Square Enix. I think in order for us to see Chrono and Smash, we would have to see a remake of the original game coming down the pipeline within the next few years. For now, it could be possible that Square Enix is just afraid of going back and tarnishing the legacy that the game has created for itself. But at the same time, they're doing a remake of Final Fantasy VII, which has a similar place in a lot of fans' hearts. There was also the Secret of Mana remake a little while back, so if they could do something like that for Chrono Trigger, but, you know, uh make it good, Chrono could quite easily be on his way to Smash. This is a bit of a best case scenario, and I don't see it being super likely considering the series hasn't been touched in so long, but if there was a future that would allow Chrono to cross into Smash Bros, this would be it. Fans will always get excited to see a legacy character HD-ified for Smash Bros, and if they want to jumpstart a Chrono renaissance, there's no better advertisement than being in Nintendo's All-Star Fighter. Hype level 8! Likelihood 2. Amaterasu. I'll Call Me HD has a great port on the Switch and everyone should play it. That's it, that's the clip, moving on! Hype level! I know I already said Spyro would be a nice addition as a quadruped fighter, but that point goes double for Amaterasu. Am I even saying that right? The only place I've ever heard Amaterasu said out loud is from Naruto, so... Now I'm thinking about it, and I don't know about you, but it makes me very uncomfortable that both of these things are based on the same mythology. Either way, I'm just gonna move on and hope that this eerie black flame that people shoot from their eyes is pronounced the same way as this cute little white wolf. And if not, just make sure to leave 50 comments in a row making fun of me. Great! 
Okami is a simply brilliant game, and as you can tell from this footage, it has one of the most unique art styles you'll ever find in a video game. The game's narrative is based on Japanese folklore and mythology, and this pairs perfectly with these visuals. They're inspired by multiple classical eastern art styles, including... God, why did I ever agree to talk about this game? Okami's gameplay is heavily inspired by The Legend of Zelda. You go on a big adventure through dungeons, solving puzzles, and defeating enemies in order to take down the big bad. Instead of items though, Amaterasu uses godlike abilities that are called upon using the Celestial Brush. By drawing different gestures with the brush, you can call on your arsenal of moves, and as you make your way through the game you unlock attacks, traversal abilities, and other environmental modifications that will help you to progress. Having Amaterasu using the Celestial Brush to conjure bombs or slice through opponents and smash ultimate would simply be way too cool, and seeing her in all her cell shaded glory next to the rest of the cast would be nothing short of amazing. Similarly to Phoenix Wright, looking at Marvel vs. Capcom 3 gives a pretty good idea of what a general moveset could look like in Smash, but even the Source game itself has such a wide variety of weapons and brush techniques featured in the game that I know there's more than enough material here for a fully fleshed out Smash character. More than anything though, I think Okami itself deserves more people's attention, and Smash is a great way to get it. Its initial release left its status leaning more towards a cult classic, but once it was ported to other systems, especially more recently to the current gen consoles, it started to pick up more steam. Having Amaterasu in Smash would no doubt make for a character that would be a blast to play, as well as pointing fans towards Okami HD right at home on the Switch. So I think this pick is a total win-win. Capcom may have a lot of other things going on, and sure, that probably lowers the chances of seeing a character like Amaterasu, who sits on the edge of the public eye, but having her in the game is such an exciting prospect, I don't really care how likely it is. If you like Zelda, you will no doubt like Okami as well, and the story more than surprised me on multiple occasions with how fleshed out some of the character arcs are. Especially when you get into some of the more plot-centric villagers, like Susano. Oh my god, not more Naruto, please, for the love of- Hype level 8! Likelihood 2. So there you have it. That's all of the character suggestions I have time for today, but there's plenty more where that came from. Feel free to give more suggestions or talk about who you're most excited for from this list down in the comments. You can check out my most recent videos here and my Twitch channel and Discord is in the description. Thanks a lot guys and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye bye for now!